Please welcome the CEO of the Spiraloid Workshop Company, Bay Rate. So, uh, I have the dream job of every 14 year old. Um, throughout my career, I've been involved in making some very popular movies, games, comics, and tools. Most notably, I worked on Gollum's facial animation system for The Lord of the Rings, uh, the source filmmaker, and a bunch of Valve games. But my real love has always been comics. Uh, so we started a studio where we're creating VR graphic novels. These are built from the ground up to be experienced in VR. While I've always been dazzled by VFX and movies, they always felt like they raced by way too fast. I can't really pause and stop and savor it. But with a comic, I can stop to linger on that favorite moment and really fall in love with it. Um, there's something really personal about this. It feels like the creator is sort of reaching through the comic book itself to give me a little piece of personal creative inspiration. And that little personal spark is, I think, what makes comics inspire so many toys and movies and games and roller coasters. And that spark is really what's made me want to become an artist here in the first place. So we built a VR comic called Nanite Fulcrum Issue 1. It's the start of a new universe that I created about a girl who rallies the millions of people online to save the world from a nanoscopic alien invasion. It's my sort of love letter to drone racing, maker culture, and online gaming. Made in 3D, this comic is like nothing you've ever seen before because it can only exist in VR. Scattered throughout its pages are hidden panel bonuses that you can dive into and explore. It's part graphic novel, part mini game, part treasure hunt. Let me show you what it looks like. So, cool. <laughs> so the way I like to think about it is that while it looks like a simple book in VR, what it really is is sort of a magic book that's disguising itself as a theme park. Uh, the bonus panels are really entry points into the universe, almost like a menu. It means that with a VR comic, you can shift from merely being a passive reader to becoming an active participant. You can dive in, find cool artwork, play games, watch movies, and eventually use tools to expand the universe yourself with other fans. But now you can get it even closer to your favorite comic book moments in 3D, seeing it from different angles, interacting, and even playing inside the panel. Here's an example of what I mean. Inside the last page, there's a bonus where you get to play as the bad guys in the finale of the story of issue one. The panel is a mini game where you can catch bullets with lightning to create monofilament and create a vortex of wreckage. The whole time, you're surrounded by the exact same 3D art that's used to actually make the comic book. It's my take that the maturity 3D tools and VR have created sort of a perfect storm that's made it possible for a new cross-media art form to emerge. As a personal creator of movies, games, and comics, it's really mind-blowing for me to think about all the cool experiences that I can build inside of the panels of a VR graphic novel. These days at the Spiraloid Workshop, there's a lot of mischievous laughter as we figure out weird, cool experiments and little blasts of awesome that we can hide inside the panels for people to discover inside of issue two. We're very excited about VR comics, and we think that they're going to become the new outer shell for tomorrow's pop culture hit franchises. Nanite Fulcrum Issue 1 is available now on Oculus. You can see it downstairs. Come dive in. We'll see you in the panels. Please welcome Developer Platforms Product Manager from Google, Nathan Martz.
Hey everyone, uh, I'm Nathan. Uh, I lead product for VR and AR developer tools at Google. Thank you all so much for coming today. It is awesome to be here. So at Google, we believe that immersive computing, VR and AR, is going to fundamentally change the way that we learn about the world, communicate with one another, and interact with information. And we're committed to ensuring that these transformative technologies are accessible to everyone in the world. We took a big step, all right, there we go, visuals, uh, towards realizing this vision last year with the release of our first Daydream Ready and Tango compatible phones. This year, we're focused on scaling these platforms through the larger Android ecosystem. The thing is, we know that as cool as these devices are, and as hard as, frankly, they are to make, ultimately, people are gonna buy them for the experiences that they enable. Um, so, through the launch of these new platforms, we've been able to work with some of the best developers in VR and AR, people who have created experiences that are useful and inspirational, entertaining and educational. And none of this content would be possible without great development tools like Unity. So we're working hard to ensure that these tools are available for developers, big and small. All right, in March, we were closely with Unity to release native Daydream uh, integrations with Unity 5.6 so that you can build for Daydream without downloading custom builds or technical previews. But today, I'm very excited to announce that we'll be doing the same thing for Tango and AR with a native integration coming later this year in Unity 2017.2. This is gonna make Tango AR development for smartphones just as accessible and powerful as Daydream VR is today. Now, these native integrations give us an incredible foundation, but at Google, we wanna go beyond the foundational technologies. And in the developer tools team, we think of ourselves as having a pretty simple mission. Basically, our job, if we, there we go, is to make awesome easy, or at least as easy as possible, right? We wanna build tools that help you focus on creativity and innovation, not on the nuts and bolts. So today, I'm gonna to share some new VR and AR tools that we're building, investments that we're making in the platform based on feedback from developers like you. So first, we know that all of you are here to innovate. We'll go to the next slide. Um, but in order to innovate, you've got to be able to iterate quickly. Uh, with traditional mobile development, it can take minutes to build a new app, push it to the device, and try out a change, which is way too long if you're trying to innovate. So that's why we're creating Instant Preview. It's a new solution integrated into both the editor and the hardware, allowing you to make a change and see it on device in seconds, not minutes. And the latency is low enough that you can view it even in a VR HMD. With lighting and shadowing, it's as dynamic and responsive as your interactions. There we go. Um, we, want you, we want solutions that are dynamic, not pre-baked. But of course, implementing dynamic lighting and shadowing in a way that's performant on mobile GPUs is extremely challenging. That's why we're building Daydream Renderer, which is a suite of highly optimized tools that supports dynamic lighting and shadowing in stereo at 60 on today's flagship phones. Of course, no matter what renderer you use, performance is critical in immersive computing. But to optimize your application, you have to understand what the hardware is doing under the hood. So today, we're announcing two new introspection tools. The first is called PerfHUD, which gives you real-time hardware stats at a glance in and out of VR. And Gapid, which is a tool that lets you do deep GPU profiling and static analysis on your PC. Now, lastly, we understand that excellence in immersive computing isn't just about the nuts and bolts. It's about the interactions that you're creating, right? The best practices that underline the experience. We can go to the next slide, thank you. So we spent a lot of this last year working with our developers, learning about what works and what doesn't work in VR and AR. We want to share these learnings with the entire developer community. So today we're announcing a brand new initiative called Daydream Elements. It's a modular, open source application that contains focused examples of best practices with code that's fully open, modular, and ready to drop into your own games and applications. So everything that you've heard about is coming very soon with Instant Preview, Daydream Renderer, and Daydream Elements out later this month, with Gapid and Perfud following close behind this summer. You'll hear more from us on our blogs and social media when these are actually available, but it's coming very soon. So, although these launches are important and exciting and central to our mission, ultimately realizing the vision of making awesome easy 
isn't something that we do on our own or in a vacuum. It's something that we do through collaboration with developers, with Unity, with technology companies that share our vision. Ultimately, we make awesome easy together. So with that, I'd love to hand it off to someone who shares this vision, whose company has built some of the best AR tools in the world, Jay Wright, the president of Euphoria. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks, Nathan. That is great stuff. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Euphoria is the most widely used AR platform in the world. Developers all over the globe, including many of you, have used Euphoria to create more than 40,000 applications in app stores. Now, Euphoria solves one of the most critical problems in AR, seeing the world so that you can put your content in it. And so far, seeing the world has meant recognizing objects so that we can attach content to them. For example, we have seen amazing experiences for kids that attach content to toys and educational materials. And there is a ton of activity and enterprise to visualize information on everything from brochures to industrial machinery. But we'd like to extend content beyond objects to interact with the surrounding environment. After all, I don't just want to animate Mr. Potato Head's face. I want the little green army men to roam the room. I mean, let's make Toy Story come to life. Well, this kind of interaction requires a new generation of depth-aware camera technologies, like we now have with Tango. And it also requires a new way to see the world in Euphoria, and we call that Euphoria Smart Terrain. Smart Terrain delivers you a real-time description of the environment that includes all the objects and surfaces around you. Now, let's take a look at what this looks like. And I'd like to bring Manish, Dave, and Vinny to the stage for a demo. Come on up, guys. So we're going to do an example based on a trading card game that takes place on everyone's second favorite planet, Mars. And so we have a life-size game. We're going to show you cards at life-size. We're going to show them on the stage. But of course, this is an experience that belongs on, on a table. And first, let's look at the content we have for each of the cards. And then we'll play them and see how they work together. All right. So Manish, let's take a look at our astronaut card and see what we've got there. All righty. There's our astronaut. And you can see how far astronaut fashion has come. It's phenomenal. Let's look at our next card. And here we've got a drone. Let's see what our little drone looks like. OK. I think about how I'm going to play that guy. And next one, we have our hazard card. So here we have a fissure. And we'll probably see a little bit of gas coming up out of the fissure. OK, awesome. All righty. So now let's see what this looks like if we were to play these and put them together. Dave, let's go ahead and put down the fissure card, play our obstacle. And you're going to see now our gas is going to start rising vertically. Now, how about now we fire up the drone? Let's go ahead and put the drone down. All right, Manish, let's go ahead and launch our drone. All right, there comes our drone. Now, here's where the magic happens. Notice how when Manish starts panning over the stage, you're going to see a mesh that's built out dynamically as he moves so that the drone can follow it. This is smart terrain delivering you terrain, surfaces, and objects in real time. No pre-scanning of this stage happened before we did this demo. You'll also notice as he approached the podium, we had a vertical plane that built on the front of the podium. And you saw when he just touched on the podium surface, ice appeared. Awesome. OK, so now that we've got ice, I think we ought to play that astronaut card and see what, uh, see what our astronaut might want to do with that. So now we've got the card on the ground. Our astronaut's coming up from the surface. And she's going to make her way over to that ice going across that same smart terrain plane that was just created for us. We've, uh, we've actually named this astronaut Bunny for the uh, obvious reason. But Bunny's going to hop her way over to the podium. And now uh, she's actually going to interact with that ice. When Bunny gets next to the ice, she knows to retrieve. Come on, Bunny, turn around. Check out the ice. She retrieves the world's largest ice drill. And she's going to point that at the ice. 
and drill and drill and drill, and uh, she is successful. We probably will have found water on Mars. Remarkable accomplishment for, for humankind. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Great demo. Thank you very much. So we hope we've given you just a glimpse of what's possible when your content can go beyond objects and interact with the surrounding environment. We're giving you the creative freedom to build the next generation of AR experiences that, frankly, we have only begun to imagine. Now, we're also going to give you some great content. This demo is not just a demo for today's presentation. You're actually looking at the new Vuforia sample app that will ship with Unity 2017.2, when Vuforia is integrated in Unity. And if you have not started with Vuforia and Unity yet, you can get started today at developer.vuforia.com. So finally, I'd like to thank all of you for the amazing work that you continue to do with Vuforia. And I'd like to thank our friends at Unity and Google, and of course, the entire Vuforia team for all the hard work that makes this possible. Thank you very much.